Jules Verne's Rocket to the Moon is a 1967 Eastman Color British science fiction comedy film directed by Don Sharp and starring Burl Ives, Troy Donahue, Gert Froby and Terry Thomas. It was released in the US as Those Fantastic Flying Fools, in order to capitalize on the success of those magnificent men in their flying machines two years earlier. Topic. Plot summary In Victorian England, everyone is trying to make new scientific discoveries, including monumental failures such as the Duke of Barset whose attempt to make the first house in England illuminated by electricity lead to it going up in flames, Sir Charles Dilworthy's suspension bridge that falls apart after Queen Victoria cuts the ribbon and in Germany, Siegfried von Bülow's powerful new explosive needing only minute quantities leads to disastrous problems with the weapon's recoil. In the USA, Phineas T. Barnum's greatest show on earth burns to the ground, so he heads for England with his star, Tom Thumb. Barnum and Thumb are invited to a scientific lecture by Von Bülow who proposes the idea of sending a projectile to the moon using his powerful new explosive. Von Bülow is ridiculed but Barnum thinks the idea has the potential to make him money. He sets about finding the financial backing in order to build a giant cannon to fire the projectile, carrying a reluctant Tom Thumb. The project attracts investment from all over the world. However the spaceship designed by Sir Charles Dilworthy proves useless since it does not provide a means for returning to Earth. Barnum then meets an American aeronaut, Gaylord Sullivan, who has run off with his girlfriend, Madeleine, on her wedding day to another man, the wealthy Frenchman Henry. Upon arriving in Wales and meeting Barnum, Gaylord claims that he has designed a projectile equipped with round-trip rockets. Henry offers to finance Gaylord's missile if he agrees to take Tom Thumb's place. Meanwhile, Dilworthy and his shady brother-in-law, Harry Washington Smythe, who have already embezzled most of Barnum's funds, immediately plot to sabotage Gaylord's flight in order to win large wages on the failure of the moonship expedition. When Madeline discovers their plan, she is kidnapped and taken off to Angelica's home for wayward girls. She escapes, however, and arrives back at the launching pad, located on a mountain in Wales, just as Gaylord is being removed from the sabotaged moonship. Dilworthy, Washington Smythe, and a Russian spy, Bulgerov, sneak into the spaceship to continue the sabotage. Bulgerov pulls the takeoff lever, and the three men are sent soaring on a one-way trip. They land in what is presumably barren wasteland to find inhabitants singing in Russian. The befuddled Washington Smythe can only conclude that the Russians are already on the moon. Washington Smythe and Dilworthy find themselves as part of the Volga Boatman Work Brigade under the knout of the foreman, Bulgerov. Topic: <laughs> Main cast. Topic. Production Towers as Peter Welbeck devised the story, very loosely based on From the Earth to the Moon by Jules Verne, whilst the script was by Dave Freeman, a comedy writer for The Benny Hill Show. The film was originally announced as going to star Bing Crosby as Phineas T. Barnum and Centre Berger, along with Terry Thomas, Gert Froby and Wilfred Hyde White. AIP said it would be a wild adventure laced with comedy. In the end Lionel Jeffries replaced Hyde White and Burl Ives and Dahlia Levy stood in for Crosby and Berger. The film was almost entirely shot in Ireland starting 6 August 1966. 
The rocket launch was shot at the site of a disused copper mine in Avoca in Co. Wicklow. Other exterior scenes were shot in the sand dunes of British Bay, and the interior scenes were shot at Ardmore Studios, just south of Dublin. Director Don Sharp, who had made several films for the producer Harry Allen Towers, recalled that the film was Towers' most expensive. Attempting to obtain more funds for the projected $3 million budget, Towers approached several international film studios who planned to release the films in their home countries, Constantin Film in West Germany, Anglo Amalgamated in Great Britain and American International Pictures in the United States of America. In exchange, each of the film studios provided funds with the provisos that the national stars of Gert Froby, Terry Thomas and Troy Donahue received more screen time expanding the originally much tighter screenplay. <laughs> Release Topic: British release. During production, the film was known as Jules Verne's Rocket to the Moon, but when it was screened by the British censors on the 21st of February 1967, it was registered as Rocket to the Moon. Unusually, it was presented to the BBFC by the producer Harry Towers instead of the distribution company, which indicates that no distribution deal had been struck at the time. However, by the time it was released, on 13 July 1967, it was once again known as Jules Verne's Rocket to the Moon. The Times reviewer, Michael Billington, was not impressed. Inspired by Jules Verne, the credits for this film rather cryptically announce. One can't argue with the credits, of course, but a more instantly recognizable inspiration is that brand of screen comedy that assumes that a large gathering of well-known names plus some vintage piece of machinery a car for preference, but a plane or rocket will do adds up to irresistible mirth. But, as this film takes nearly two hours to demonstrate, it's no use cramming the cast with comedy actors if you're not going to give them anything very funny to do. U.S. <laughs> release <laughs> 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 In the United States, the film was first released by American International Pictures in Los Angeles on 26 July 1967 as Those Fantastic Flying Fools, in order to capitalize on the success of Those Magnificent Men in Their Flying Machines 1965, which also starred Terry Thomas and Gert Froby, and where the director Don Sharp was responsible for the aerial sequences. However, it wasn't the hit that the distributors expected, so it was cut down to 95 minutes and released as Blast Off elsewhere in the US, but that version was no success either. The Los Angeles Times said the film had a leisurely, not to say soporific pace. It takes its time, which is risky in a slapstick enterprise. Still it does retain an easy sauntering tone of amiable nonsense, with enough pratfalls and explosions to keep the small fry happy. The New York Times said, It's all been done before, and better, but there are still some smiles. <laughs> <laughs> 